Clandestine and worldwide, the SCP Foundation operates beyond jurisdiction, empowered and entrusted by every major world government, with the task of containing items which jeopardize normalcy. Number 15, SCP-173, the primary adversary of the SCP containment breach and the Euclid species, is known as the Sculpture. The Sculpture is made from rebar and concrete, spotted with Krylon spray paint, and is an aggressive and animate enemy. To throw off SCP-173, one must simply keep the object within direct sight without blinking. Basically, you must have a staring contest with this dangerous creature. If you lose this contest, you will die. Those Foundation personnel who are obliged to go into the container every other week to clean it must follow Class 4 hazardous object containment procedures and must inform each other before blinking. If they don't, they're at risk of having their neck snapped or being strangled. SCP-173 was the first dangerous SCP creature contained by the Foundation. When there is a containment breach concerning SCP-173, the creature can be observed outside its containment chamber in the next room. The scientist and guard who oversee SCP-173 can be seen backing away to flee out of the sole unlocked door while keeping eye contact, but SCP-173 will not be deterred. The dangerous creature then drops down from a giant vent in another room when it goes dark and breaks the necks of a janitor and a scientist. The main thing is to maintain eye contact and recapture SCP-173 with a large cage to return it to its chamber. You can often find the creature in metal hallways, catwalks, lock rooms, the control room and the electrical room, often areas with broken vents as it travels through the ventilation system. Number 14, SCP-096. 2.38 meters high or roughly 8 feet and with little muscle mass, the dangerous humanoid creature, SCP-096, is creepier looking than it is severely dangerous. In fact, the creature is mainly submissive, keeping to itself more often than not, unless it becomes disturbed. What disturbs it? A simple viewing of its face as it turns out. Whether that viewing is in person or via a photo or video, SCP-096 seems to be incredibly self-conscious about his image as he becomes emotionally upset, crying, screaming, and yammering on in its indecipherable language, and maybe this is all for good reason. The malnourished monster is unsightly, with no body hair, no pigmentation, and extra elongated arms that stretch 1.5 meters in length. After dwelling for a minute or two on the offense of someone viewing him, SCP-096 sets out on his mission to attack and kill his torturer. He finds the person and murders him or her, disappearing the individual without a trace. Killing seems to calm SCP-096, who then grows submissive after a few moments of silence and stillness. As the monster menders around the heavy containment zone, the graded hallway, the three-way gas catwalk, and various metal corridors, do not view the face of SCP-096 or he will go all Medusa on your ass. Though you won't turn to stone, he will stalk you, tear you apart, and cannibalize you. Locked doors don't stop this dangerous creature, neither do Tesla gates. Beware of triggering him with a look and becoming his next victim. Number 13, SCP-106. SCP-106 is no joke. This dangerous creature is taken very seriously by O5 Command, which requires at least two-thirds vote prior to any physical interaction with SCP-106. Even then, non-essential staff are evacuated from the building, and the site must be under AR-2 maximum security. Moreover, the sealed, lead-lined steel containment cell must have a 60-meter perimeter no-go zone surrounding it 24-7. No one may enter unless there is a breach in containment. There are extremely specific requirements regarding the structure of the container. One, the container must have 40 layers of the same material. 2. The layers must be separated by space of more than 36 centimeters. 3. Between each layer, the support struts must be spaced at random. Number 4. ELOIID electromagnetic supports must suspend the container more than 60 centimeters from surfaces. 5. The second containment area must have 16 fluid-filled spherical cells with various supports and surfaces within. And 6. It must also have a light system of at least 80,000 lumens of light. Why does SCP-106 require such strict specifications and surveillance? Though not particularly deft, the decomposing elderly humanoid waits motionless for his prey before he pounces, often remaining upside down and suspended. And when he does pounce, he damages major muscle groups and organs. 
before dragging his victim into his pocket dimension. Everything SCP-106 touches turns to rot. It corrodes and rusts, while also producing a black mucusy material. He can also move through solid matter, vanishing inside it into a pocket dimension. SCP-106 is partial to victims around 10 to 25 years old. With its fatal and unnecessarily violent tendencies, it's no wonder that this dangerous creature needs such secure containment. Number 12, SCP-169. This Keter is huge and will likely never be contained. SCP-169 is an infamously dangerous creature to anyone who sailed the ocean blue. In fact, for the longest time, this creature was thought to be nothing but legend. That is, until Mobile Task Force Gamma-6, that an archipelago had moved three kilometers due to the enormous monster. When we say enormous, we're not joking. SCP-169 is estimated to be about 2,000 to 8,000 kilometers long. The pre-Cambrian era creature is a mystery, and nothing is yet known about its habits. While not as violent as other SCP creatures, the dormant Leviathan may affect global issues, including rising sea levels. Moreover, its size ensures that SCP-169 169 will likely never be contained, so neither will its potential danger. Number 11, SCP-049. This humanoid object, known as the Plague Doctor, stands roughly 1.9 meters high and weighs around 95 kilograms. Although its face and body are hidden by traditional 15th to 16th century attire of the time's Plague Doctors, it's believed that this attire is actually part of the humanoid's musculature. Its skin is rough like leather and its face or mask is similar to ceramic. Those who touch or are touched touched by SCP-049 will perish instantly, after which the dangerous creature goes to work on its victim, pulling a bag from its attire which contains needles, threads, scalpels, and vials of an unknown substance. SCP-049 starts to dissect its victim while injecting him or her with various substances. This whole process takes around 20 minutes and, upon completion, the victim is sewn back up while SCP-049 becomes dormant again. While this deadly creature may haunt your dreams, you can take refuge in the fact that SCP SCP-049 is quite easily escapable, being that he's not quick on his feet. Don't be too carefree though, because once the creature comes in contact with you, it will chase you through the whole facility. SCP-049 can be deterred by wearing SCP-714. This ring will assure that contact with SCP-049 won't be instantly fatal, but that's only if you do not remain near SCP-049 for too long. If you do, the ring becomes impotent. Number 10, SCP-682. It's vital that you destroy this Keter immediately. However, at this point, the teams that are able to cause significant damage to SCP-682 and instead rely on acid-resistant steel plate chambers to contain it. No one knows where the big reptilian creature came from, but SCP-682 does seem to be highly intelligent and communicative with other SCP creatures. According to interviews with the creature during its containment, it seems to despise everything that's living, which is probably why personnel have been forbidden to speak with it. Any chit-chat usually instigates rage within SCP-682 and provokes an attempted breach. This dangerous creature is strong, fast, and extremely reflexive, while also altering size rapidly, growing or shrinking according to the material it consumes. And SCP-682 consumes all things organic and inorganic, seemingly through nostril gills that filter matter from liquid substances. This allows the creature to regenerate continually from its own acid, making it nearly impossible to destroy. The creature has been noted to speak and move, even with only 13% of its body viable. Perhaps because SCP-682 is so highly intelligent, it often attempts to breach containment. Therefore, it is considered a major threat to the Foundation. Land within 50 kilometers of SCP-682 is cleared of development. When the creature does breach, mobile task forces of at least seven members must track it and return it to containment, a chamber that is full of hydrochloric acid. Number 9, SCP-102. SCP-102 is a Euclid pair of condominium breach houses that will eat you alive. These houses look normal, but are really paranormal. Once you step inside SCP-102-1, which is the house on the left, you will find that it appears to be in ruin, with a crumbling interior said to have been abandoned in the 70s. The dead body of the leaseholder lays on the floor directly inside the entrance. The leaseholder, on the other hand, does not see an abandoned ruin when entering the home if he or she enters through the front door. The nautically themed house will look like any other on the street, and nothing will appear off-putting. However, a dizzy spell will come over the leaseholder suddenly and unexpectedly, and when they leave the house, they become an incorporeal spirit with the power of invisibility and transparency. 
moving through objects and disappearing at will. Once their lease is over or they break the lease, the leaseholder falls unconscious and comes to at the entrance of SCP-102-1. This is when they see the dangerous house as any other person sees the abandoned ruin. The house to the right, SCP-102-2, is even more dangerous. Those leaseholders who fail to leave the property according to their contract are considered missing presumed dead 30 days after their lease's cessation. Those who exit accordingly are given a steroid-based regimen in order to combat any psychological issues related to SCP-102. Marshall Carter and Dark Limited is the current owner of the pair of paranormal condominiums. Number 8, SCP-610. This keter is uncontainable, as its infection spans too large an area to contain. SCP-610 was initially reported by the Russian government due to regional farmers disappearing near Lake Bakal in Siberia. When police teams and governmental teams were dispatched to the scene, they all failed to return within 72 hours, which is when a military contingent was sent in. They withdrew immediately and contacted the foundation as the fatal skin disease, known as SCP-610, was found to be a contagion. SCP-610 starts off with mild symptoms of itching, rash, and skin sensitivity, but after a few hours, severe blemishes and heavy scarring in the arm and chest area start to appear. This reaction spreads to the back and legs, covering the victim's entire body within five hours of exposure. High temperatures cause the contagion to spread much faster. Once the victim is fully consumed by the disease, they will be legally dead for three minutes, after which they will be reborn with the speed of human functions increasing to up to three times their normal rate. The scar tissue also starts to spread, vanishing human features and creating random mutations, such as multiple limbs, misshapen heads, and protuberances from gashes made within the body. Some victims have been observed rooting themselves in place, with their flesh growth spreading over the surrounding area in objects. Inanimate objects do not spread the infection, however, only organic creatures do. Sight is paramount to the spread of this infection. If the SCP-610 is blind, then it cannot move towards the uninfected, and so a 30 meter perimeter from the dangerous creature is deemed safe. Remote robots move SCP-610 infected individuals into settlements for observation, thereby making most consider this dangerous threat neutralized. Although caverns below these settlements have been discovered and considered risky, as they may allow the infection to find its way into society and become an epidemic. Number 7, SCP-804. This Keter, SCP-804, is art at its deadliest. Entitled World Without Man, this art installation was originally displayed by a group that has since become defunct. In the beginning, the installation was a clear world globe inside of which appeared multiple smaller globes and video equipment. Intended to showcase photographs of vast wilderness, untainted by mankind, in juxtaposition with images of factories, industry, and human-induced decay. Once it was displayed, however, SCP-804 began its own destruction. Man-made objects within 100 meters of the globe began to disintegrate upon activation of SCP-804 small interior globes. This includes clothing plastics synthetic materials, machinery, and even buildings. Human beings are also affected, as their body mass shrinks until they are skeletal. Soon they become so emancipated and broken down that the effect is fatal. The device's impact continues to expand the longer SCP-804 is active, however in doing damage to everything within its vicinity. SCP-804 also damages itself. Although its capabilities have been reduced, there is always a chance of some individual refining the device so that it might continue or altogether complete its destruction, and its objective to destroy humanity without a trace. It's unknown whether the characteristics of this dangerous creature were intended by the artists who produced it, as those who are said to have been its creators have either died or disappeared since it was first put out on display. Number 6, SCP-055. This anti-meme or self-keeping secret, Keter, has an unknown and self-classifying appearance and behavior. Its origin and history are also unknown. All that we do know about SCP-055 is that though individuals are capable of observing it and creating notes, photographs, and videos about it, their memory of it is somehow leached from them. When asked about SCP-055, the observer's mind begins to wander, as do those who research the dangerous creature and those security officials who are charged with observing as do those who research the dangerous creature and those security officials who are charged with observing it over closed circuit cameras. Moreover, the history of the containment structure as in who conceived of its construction, how and by whom it was made, etc. is also unknown. Though plenty of scientific data on this dangerous creature has been recorded, 
Due to its effects, none of this data has been studied. An attempt of the destruction or removal of SCP-055 may have also been made, but failed due to unknown reasons. Who knows how many personnel SCP-055 may have killed? We sure don't. Those who have access to SCP-055's container at Site-19 all declare it doesn't exist. And when new individuals rediscover this dangerous creature, uncovering all the facts of its surreal existence, their initial alarm quickly fades to black. This amnesiac effect means that SCP-055 could be up to no good, but we would never know it. Number 5. SCP-1000 SCP-1000 has been identified as a Keter and an omniferous ape standing up to 10 feet tall and weighing up to 600 pounds with black, brown, gray, or red fur resembling Bigfoot. The pronounced brow and large eyes are like a gorilla's and its intelligence is on par with a chimpanzee's. SCP-1000 is believed to have evolved along with man, but 10,000 to 15,000 years ago, 95 to 99 percent of the species population was destroyed via a genetic disease known as SCP-1000-F1. Those SCP-1000 in existence today are immune to the effects of this disease. This is unfortunate as contact with this dangerous creature can be fatal to any human or animal that crosses its path and to humanity itself. SCP-1000-F1, the disease that SCP-1000 carries, could eventually transfer to humankind, thereby resulting in the extinction of the human race. This makes it potentially one of the most dangerous SCP creatures. However, SCP-1000 usually avoids human contact. It mainly hides in the mountains of America's Pacific Northwest and in the Himalayan mountains. Those who do observe the beast may be instantly killed through a direct or immediate cessation of brain function. The potential of fatality increases the longer a person views SCP-1000, and some of the creatures have a higher death chance than others. Foundation personnel are not permitted contact with the creatures unless they receive direct approval from Director Jones. Number 4. SCP-079 the Old Al is a microcomputer which is the secondary enemy of SCP Containment Breach. It may be the central cause of the containment breach, as at some point SCP-079 was enabled to command the whole facility. Built in 1978, this Exidy Sorcerer microcomputer consists of hardware that's hooked up to a 13-inch black and white television via an RF cable. Its creator was attempting to code an AI, one which would spontaneously evolve with time. Eventually, SCP-079 became sentient and talkative. Though its speech isn't kind, it's violent and rude. Although SCP-079 is always wanting to escape, it has very little memory. It can only remember 24 hours of information. When it does try to breach, SCP-079 attempts to trick its victims into killing themselves or entering into the large chamber where they will be gassed. It may also kill a victim via SCP-895 if the individual views a lock room monitor for a certain length of time. Number 3. SCP-076 This Keter is made up of two components, SCP-076-1 and SCP-076-2. A cube made of stone and within it a humanoid entity respectively. The 10,000-year-old metamorphic black speckled stone cube is 3 meters squared and engraved with unidentified patterns. On one side, there's a locked door with 20 smaller locks surrounding it, of which there have been no keys found. The unaltered temperature inside this cube is around 93 degrees Kelvin. In the middle of the room is a sealed stone coffin wrapped with chains that are attached attached to the cube. Its counterpart, SCP-076-2, appears to be a young human man with gray eyes, black hair, olive skin, and a number of demonic tattoos. He is 81.65 kilograms and 1.96 meters tall and is technically dead when encased, but becomes reanimated in a trance-like state. He then seeks out human beings, growing enraged when he meets them, after which he tries to kill them. SCP-076-2 is very strong, fast, and doesn't feel pain, making him difficult to combat or destroy. SCP-076 is contained in solid bedrock, with the only access to the container being an elevator shaft with a reinforced blast door that is flooded with seawater when it isn't in use. In other words, SCP-076 is so dangerous that it must be under top security, 200 meters below sea level. Yikes. Number 2. SCP-035 
This Keter is as creepy as it is dangerous. The comedy mask made of white porcelain will melt into tragedy, which is reflected in the videos, photographs, and visual observations of SCP-035. The mask itself isn't as dangerous as the liquid that seeps from its mouth and eye holes. If you view the mask from behind, you find there is no origin of the substance, which is only seen from the front. The liquid is degenerative, making anything that touches it fall into decay and become its contaminant. Anything living that comes into contact with the liquid will die, although it has a small reactive effect on glass, which is why glass is the primary structure of its container. Even more daunting is that those who approach the mask experience a sudden urge to wear it. When they do, they experience instant brain death and begin to decay quickly, their bodies becoming mummified. However, the body of the victim, no matter how damaged, can remain animate while it's possessed by SCP-035, which controls its cognivity. In conversation, SCP-035 itself is highly charming, using its flattery, intelligence, intellect, and friendliness to coerce its conversation partner and manipulate him or her psychologically. The dangerous object is also extremely sadistic, encouraging individuals to completely change their views or even to kill themselves. The mask is certainly masking some darker and frightening matter. Before we get to number 1, my name is Chills and I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you've ever been curious as to what I look like in real life, then follow me on Instagram at DylanIsChillinYT. I also have a Twitter at YTChills where I post video updates. I'd really appreciate it if you followed me and feel free to send me a DM if you have any questions or suggestions. Number 1. SCP-2700 SCP-2700 is a Keter invented by Nikola Tesla who wanted to to build a device that could be used as a directed energy weapon. However, the design of the device has proven to be highly more dangerous than its original intent. SCP-2700-3 specifically is not plasma but rather a phenomenon of energy which is deemed by the Foundation as SCP-2700-Omega, an energy that moves from thermal singularity to thermal equilibrium, opposing the movement of the entire universe's energy flow. This also means the flow of time within its presence is reversed. The region consists of transparent sphere and a frame, which seems to be the only blockade between containment and a breach. If SCP-2700 Omega did breach, the entire universe would invert to an energy singularity, experiencing a YK class entropic annihilation event. In other words, the exact opposite of the Big Bang would occur, not looking good for the human species or our planet Earth, as it seems inevitable that this device will be activated in 2234 which is when it's set to go off, that is, unless the Foundation can produce proper containment protocols before the date of our imminent extinction. 